Huh. Look at my shirt. It says instructor. You know what that means? That means I do know it all and I never make mistakes. Or do I? What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickers to the Marina. If you are new to our channel, I just want to say welcome to us. I really hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, really consider hitting the subscribe button over here and make sure you click the little bell. That way you will be notified each and every time that we upload a new video. If you are a subscriber to us, I just want to say thank you for coming back and I really hope you enjoy the video. In today's video, what we're going to do is talk about the top five mistakes I see all dive professionals make. And guess what? I'm not excluded out of this. I've made the same mistakes in my past and I'll probably still make some of these mistakes today. But one thing that sets a good instructor aside from, say, a bad instructor is how you deal with that mistake and how do you learn from it and how do you strive not to make it. So let's take a look at my top five mistakes I see all dive instructors make. Number five. One of the most common mistakes I see dive instructors make is they simply don't read standards. Now, there's several reasons that they may choose not to. Maybe they just taught this class last week and, and standards are fresh on their mind. Or maybe they're just complacent and they forget the fact that standards change year to year and we have to stay up to date with standards. Now, back in the old days when we'd read standards, they were kind of tedious in how you had to find what you were looking for. We had these big three ring binders. We had to flip through the three ring binders just to find the information. Nowadays, standards are digitalized. All we do is go to our training agency's website. We download those training standards. We go to our uh, control F or our find function and we find what it is and boom, there it is. Me personally, I bring it up on my SSI app for every class that I teach. I just type it in, boom, there it is. And I'm able to teach straight off the app itself and stay up to date with standards. Now, another a little technique that I do to make sure that I'm reading those standards is, is I have these students do it. On the very first night of class, whether it's the open water class, the navigation, the rescue, or even an instructor level course, I'll bring up standards on our projector screen and I'll have the students read it. This does two things. One, it lets the students know exactly what they've got to do to earn their certification. And number two, it keeps me up to date. Yeah, maybe I just taught that class yesterday or the day before, but standards are never really meant to be memorized when they're written down and they always change. So with that being said, it doesn't matter what class you're teaching or how often you teach it, you should always read over standards before you teach a class. Number four, another mistake that I see a lot of instructors make is they try to teach something that they don't really have that much experience in. Now, I'm not really saying that the instructor doesn't have enough experience to actually be an instructor in it, but maybe they've not made that particular dive in a long time and now they're trying to teach it again. Let me kind of explain what I mean here. To become a specialty instructor is a pretty simple process. There's actually three different ways to do it. One is an instructor seminar. This is where you sit down with an instructor trainer. He goes over the entire course with you. He makes sure you, you understand how to teach it, where to find the standards, where to find the teaching guides for it. And he has you kind of do a mock scenario and then he'll sign you off. Number two is a co-teaching situation. Co-teaching is when you've got a more senior instructor who is actually teaching the course. You inadvertently become, say, an assistant instructor for him and you're assisting throughout the course. And and after one or two or even three students, he'll sign you off to teach that class. The other method to become a specialty instructor is through a crossover program. And the crossover is probably the simplest way to do it. This is when, say, you're an instructor for Agency A and you're crossing over to Agency B. And basically anything that you're already certified in to teach, that secondary agency is going to allow you to teach those same courses through their curriculum. Well, the problem with that is, is you may not have as much experience at that given time as what you did when you first become an instructor. Take ice diving for one. I love I love teaching the Ice Diver class and I teach Ice Diver every February and every March and it's one of my favorite classes to teach. The problem is, is I'm only teaching it during the February and March months. So usually when I teach this class, I have a co-teacher there with me or a co-instructor helping me teach the class just because I simply don't teach it all the time. Now you take a class like say the open water program, the rescue program, Program, or maybe even an instructor level program. I teach those classes all the time, so it's a little bit easier for me to keep my experience up on those because I'm teaching it all the time. 
But a lot of times instructors will get out there and they've taught this for many, many years, but maybe there's a four or five year gap between teaching, say, the, that course and teaching it now. So you always want to make sure that you stay up to date and keep your experience up with it as well. Number three, one of the biggest issues I see with dive instructors is, is they get a God complex about them and they think that they can do things that they actually can't. Um, in short, as dive instructors, we are held to a higher standard and there's a lot of knowledge that you have to know, first of all, to become a dive instructor. The problem is, is a lot of times divers simply either don't go diving or they will dive outside their expertise. You know, they'll think, well, I'm a dive instructor, I know it all, this can't happen to me, and then they'll get into a bad situation. Or number two, they just simply don't go diving because it tends to be a chore to them. In our next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how becoming a dive instructor can actually kill your love for diving, and I'll talk a little bit about how you can get around that and how you can keep that driving passion. But this is another mistake that I see a lot of dive instructors make. Either one, it's a job to them, and they don't want to do it outside their career or outside their job, and they kind of lose the interest. Or two, they feel that God complex kick in, and they think they're a better diver than what they are, and they get out here and get themselves into bad situations because they're not properly trained or properly experienced to do that particular type of diving. Number two, another huge mistake I see dive instructors make is they fail to continue their own education within scuba diving in general. You know, one of the things that I've always prided myself in is as an instructor, I know a lot, but I don't know it all. And I'm constantly taking new classes to learn new things. And even if I'm taking a class that I'm already certified in or a class that I'm already certified to teach in, I will go and audit other instructors' courses just to keep me refreshed, to continue my education as well. A lot of times in our videos, you'll see me do a lot of math problems and a lot of physics and a lot of that stuff I do know, but I'm gonna go ahead and be honest with you guys. I've got a great team of instructors that back me and help me out through a lot of this stuff. Just because I'm good, doesn't make me great. And the only way that I'm ever going to become great is to continue my education. And this is where a lot of instructors fail. They get that instructor rating, they only teach one particular course, and they never continue their education as well. So if you become a dive instructor, make sure you take a new class each and every year to continue your education as well. Number one, and probably the biggest problem or biggest mistake I see instructors make is they make diving all about them when in reality they should be focused on the student. They'll take their personal philosophies, their personal gear bias, or the bias towards gear manufacturers, and they bring it in, and that's how they try to teach students, and we really shouldn't be doing that. We should be teaching students how to dive safely, how to protect the environment, how to be able to perform skills properly, and I'll be honest with you guys, if you are a true professional, it doesn't matter the style of BC you wear, it doesn't matter the style of fins you wear. Yes, particular classes do require particular types of gear, and that's okay. If you're diving in, say, back-mounted doubles, you need that fin that's really going to be able to propel you through the water with that much weight. But if you're on a nice warm tropical environment, you don't necessarily need those heavier style fins to be able to teach that class. So it's not about you. It's not about your personal bias towards one gear manufacturer. It's not really your personal philosophy and how all divers should be. It's more so in keeping that diver safe. Give you another quick pointer here. To be successful in this industry as a dive instructor, you got to be able to do more than just teach scuba. You got to be able to sell. You got to be able to run trips. You got to be able to promote not only yourself, but promote the shop and the training agency that you're an instructor for. You've got to be able to do things outside. Maybe you work for a training center that has a charter service. You need to be able to work on uh, boats and motors and things like that so that you can be successful. Because if you're just trying to be successful teaching scuba, you're not really going to be making enough money to make it worth your while. But guys, I really hope that you understand this video is not out there to bash any instructors because even myself, I find myself making the same mistakes year after year, decade after decade. I've been in this industry for 31 years, and I can tell you guys, I've made every single one of these mistakes throughout my career. The biggest issue is, is we've got to be able to learn from these mistakes and learn from others as well. To be successful in this industry, don't make it about you. Make sure you're following standards. Make sure you're getting properly trained to teach and that you're experienced to teach what you're teaching. And get out there and continue your education as well. And I promise you, you will be a much better instructor for it. Guys, I really hope you liked this video. I hope it made a lot of sense to you. If you did like this video, simply hit that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. If you've got any questions, maybe you're interested in becoming a dive instructor, drop me a question down below and I'll try to help you out the best I can. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest 
adventure. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.